Is it the same cornstarch sort of thing that we saw years ago? Is it, is it something really new? Or tell us more about it specifically. Completely new. I think what you're referring to is uh, X-Gel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, X-Gel was uh, still a water-soluble uh, alternative to gelatin. It was a non-animal-based uh, film. Uh, our shell is a plant-derived material. It is a uh, cutting edge in terms of polymers. Uh, it's a thermoplastic uh, that uh, degrades uh, by uh, soil bacteria, active soil bacteria, uh, breaking it down and consuming it. Hmm. Someone asked just in the, in the chat, uh, how long does it take for it to evaporate? Same as water? Uh, you referring to the fill? Yeah, 98% water, 2% mystery liquid. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, two percent actives. Yeah, it's a uh, we we employ a thixotropic polymer in the fill material, uh, which uh, enables or renders the fill shear thinning. So it's a gel when it's at rest. Um, the rest, the primary ingredient, is water, and obviously the evaporation rate depends on where you're using it. So if you're in Arizona in July, it's going to probably evaporate pretty quick. You know, if you're in New York in January, probably not as readily. Huh. Now we're trying to figure out talking about how the, the gel works itself. It's sort of like the, the antithesis of cornstarch or like ballistic gel, where when it's in the paintball itself, it's gel. When it hits the target, it's liquid. And then after that impact, it's then gel again, so it sticks. Is that's that correct? correct. Yep, that's correct. That it's is... a sheer, sheer thinning liquid. So um, the, the sheer stress applied at impact is enough to liquefy the fill. So it essentially has uh, a viscosity at rest, uh, and then it has a different viscosity when shear stress is applied, uh, and then it does regel within milliseconds after impact. Then it's wow. like then it's like ketchup. It's like ketchup. Yeah. All right. Then it is a non-Newtonian fluid. What we've been wondering. Yes, it is a non-Newtonian fluid. Wow. Uh, there's, there's not a linear relationship between the viscosity and the shear rate. Yeah. Okay. And everybody, of course, is going crazy wanting to, to know more, wanting to see videos about how it breaks on a mask, how it cleans up, what the gel looks like before and after. We've got a picture here of some of the, the splats on uh, right there, so that'll help so a little bit. The, the two-tone fills. We are in the process of uh, making a whole inventory of videos that we will be releasing uh, in uh, prior or preceding our launch date. So we'll have uh, videos of us dropping the paint in water, shooting it against different targets, dropping a pod in a hopper. We've made an inventory list of videos uh, that we're going to put together for, for everybody, and we're going to release those over the next couple months. Cool. Now, Guest85 wants to know what the freeze point is on it, since it is mostly water. Um, uh, we do have a cold weather formulation that freezes at 1 degree Fahrenheit. Nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's a winter formula. That won't be a standard product. But right. It's a winner for you. This uh, the, the the trend going on in in paintball has been underboring. So the balls are much smaller, and because they're gel based, they're uh, affected by temperature, humidity, pressure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. How right. does uh, the Hydrotech differentiate? Is it actually consistent and stable through a larger degree of, of temperature and humidity? Yeah, it's it's essentially immune to it, to a certain degree. It's it's uh, resistance to ambient temperature, uh, be it uh, or or moisture. It's completely immune to moisture. Mm -hmm. So if it's humid outside, it, it does not affect your paint. It does not cause the paint to swell. Um, it can tolerate temperatures in excess of 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, it won't get soft. It won't dimple, um, or or uh, you won't see flat spots on your paint as long as you keep it under 120 degrees. So, so this could get rid of the. Uh craze to underbore. Yes, it, it'll be a very, very consistent bore. Uh, we have a precision manufacturing process, so in order for us to process the material through the line, we have to have a consistent size through the line. If you have variation, you're not able to make a good ball in our production process, meaning you won't even get it assembled. So it's a very consistent. So yeah. Talk a little bit about, about the shell now. People are wondering if it'll break, what, what the break for, for this is versus tourney paint and other woods ball grade paint or other grades, would it be like in, in shell brittleness and, and et cetera? We sent our, our uh, Hydrotech paint off recently 
Uh, when I say recently, in the last couple of weeks, we just got the results back of our, our uh, shell as it stands right now. Um, we compared it actually with Evil, uh, uh, the Evil brand paint, tournament grade paint. Our ball breaks exactly like, from an impact data standpoint, exactly like Evil. Oh, so okay. it's it's a uh, it's a fr very fragile shell. Uh, we have a lot more precision control, and that doesn't vary. Evil shell is still uh, sensitive to humidity, so that may change depending on the on the conditions uh, your playing conditions. Um, we're going to have that same breaking property, irrespective of if it's raining or or, or humid or 100 degrees out. Now it said uh, two bunker rub will happen, and I'm wondering what having the balls hanging around everybody says oh paintball is environmentally friendly they're, they're right. biodegradable right. but that's complete and utter bs everybody knows that you've gone to to fields out in the jungles and everything and they're swollen up like baseballs they're nasty are you still going to have the bunker pus and all the nasty byproducts of paintball with the hydrotech paint no you will not not to that extreme what you'll have is color left behind uh, the opacifier that we use, which is titanium dioxide, you find that in uh, in most paints now. It's a very common uh, opacifier, probably the most common. Um, and then you'll have the shell material up, but they won't get swollen. What happens is the shell actually starts to get brittle, breaks down, and as you as you step on it, as it gets into the soil, uh, it begins to get consumed and goes away. Um, actually, our material supplier it will be providing us with some video where they. Uh, we have it in an active soil, and then we take that soil out, and we're growing plants in it to show that the material breaks down, goes away, and then you can actually grow cucumber plants in it. Huh. <laughs> well, the big question on the boards is, Paul, how does it taste? Oh, it tastes great. It tastes phenomenal. <laughs> I, uh, I eat a few a day, actually. I've been eating a healthy, healthy diet for the last couple of years. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, there's no taste to it, actually. It's, uh, it's funny. I, I showed some players recently. Uh, that actually stopped at a, out at my park and wanted to see some samples. So I showed them and uh, let them dip their hands in the fill, let them taste it, and, and uh, there's no taste. So it's um, there's a slight um, sweet odor to the fill, um, but it uh, there's no uh, no no nasty smell after uh, after you use the product. So it's not sitting out there stinking like gelatin does today. Uh, you also don't have that oily nasty smell. You know, you don't wash the pants that you played with last week. It doesn't stink up your car, so you won't, you won't have oh, the problem. my gear bag's not going to smell like paintball anymore. Do you understand uh, that? If, yeah, you won't smell. You won't smell somebody from a week. I love the smell. I think we should, you know, but uh, you won't have that. Wow. Now, of course, also coming with the shell is the seam. Flat lines. People that are shooting tippies, stuff like that, are very particular on the type of paint that it that it shoots. Being being sort of like evil we're going to have the same sort of what's with the the, the shell itself and then the seam on the shell because there was something that i the, think the, i saw the about spin, it too. the spin sure. because of the seam if you will uh, yeah something we've been very conscious of right so the equivalent of uh scuffing a baseball so you can get a better curveball right mm -hmm. right yeah so uh we've been very conscious to make sure that that seam is smooth um you're going to have an obvious weld at the equator um you know, you're joining two halves of plastic, so you're going to see that weld. Um, it um, It's a little bit wider of a weld than you would see in traditional uh, uh, paintballs. I actually have one. I don't know if you guys can get a good look here. It may be difficult to see, but here's a, I don't know how close. You can see the band there is a little bit thicker than you'd see on a traditional ball. Uh, but essentially, it's a smooth, it's a smooth uh, uh, weld. So this way there's no point of friction on the ball, so it doesn't create a spin as it comes out of the barrel and doesn't create a curvature at the end of your trajectory. A couple last questions. Price range, Danny C. wants to know. Everybody's asking. <laughs> Price range, yeah. Uh, well, it's relative to your market. I'll tell you that on a cost comparison basis. So um, if we have a vapor, let's say that's an ultra evil quality, uh, we are cheaper to the field owner. So mm -hmm. there's additional margin built in for them. Whether or not they pass that cost savings on to the player is really up to that field box. When can we get it? Yes. Yeah, when can you get it? Yeah, right now we are on target for the end of January 2011. Um, so let's hope the holidays are kind to us and we stay on track for that.